This is part 99 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss why and how to create a custom authorization policy using a func in ASP.NET Core. At the moment, we're logged in with this username, prajim at prajimtech.com. Now, if we take a look at this user rules and claims, notice this user is in the admin role and he has edit role claim with a value of true. Now let's navigate to list roles page. Notice because this logged in user prajim at prajimtech.com is in the admin role and he also has edit role claim with a value of true. We have access to edit button. When we click this, we are redirected to edit role action within the administration controller. And if we take a look at administration controller to get to this controller, the logged in user must satisfy admin role policy. And if we take a look at this policy to satisfy this policy, the logged in user must be in the admin role. And if we take a look at the edit role action within the administration controller, Notice, to get to this action, edit role policy must be satisfied. And to satisfy this policy, the user must have edit role claim with a value of true. So the point that I'm trying to make is, to get to this edit role action within the administration controller, there are two requirements. First, the user must be in the admin role and he must have edit role claim with a value of true. Now, let's say, our requirements have changed. To be able to get to the edit role action, the user must be a member of the admin role and he must have edit role claim with a value of true. These two requirements have not changed. In addition to these two requirements, we also want to add this third requirement, must be a member of the super admin role. So to satisfy this policy, the user must meet either the first two requirements or the third requirement. If we take a look at one of the authorization policies, notice this parameter policy. This is of type, as you can see from the IntelliSense Authorization Policy Builder. This object supports Fluent Syntax, meaning we can chain multiple calls to require claim and require role like this. So looking at this, at first we might think something like the following would satisfy our authorization requirements. but this is not going to work for us. The reason is very simple. When we chain multiple calls to require role and require claim like this, there is an AND relationship between these requirements. Meaning, to satisfy this policy, all the three requirements must be met. But that's not what we want. For us, either the first two requirements must be met or it's enough if the third requirement is met. So let's quickly test to make sure this doesn't work for us. Let's chain another call to require role and then specify the role as super admin. In the administration controller, notice our edit role action is already protected using edit role policy. And to satisfy this edit role policy, these three requirements must be met. Now, if we take a look at the controller level, Notice the controller itself is protected using the admin role policy. To keep things simple and straightforward, let's keep this policy commented. This means to get to edit role action, it's enough if we satisfy just this edit role policy. Let's run our project and take a look. We are logged in using the username prajim at prajimtech.com and if we take a look at this user rules and claims, Notice, this user is in the admin role and he also has edit role claim with a value of true. This means this user has only satisfied the first two requirements. He did not satisfy this third requirement being a member of the super admin role. At the moment, within our system, we don't have super admin role at all in the first place. Now let's navigate to list roles page. Notice, we don't see the edit button anymore. That's because this logged in user did not satisfy edit role policy. So if we take a look at the list roles view, notice to render 
this edit button, the logged in user must satisfy edit role policy. At the moment, our user did not satisfy that policy, so we don't see the edit button. And we have also just seen our edit role action within the administration controller is also protected with edit role policy. So if we try to navigate to the edit role action within the administration controller directly by typing the URL in the address bar, we are redirected to access denied view. Now, let's create the super admin role. Our new role is created. Now let's navigate to list users page. I already have a user with username superadmin at prajimtech.com. Now let's make him a member of both the admin role and super admin role and also grant him edit role claim. This user satisfies these three requirements of this edit role policy. He is a member of the admin role, he has edit role claim with a value of true and he is also a member of the super admin role. So let's log out and log back in with the super admin username. Notice now when we navigate to the list roles page, we see the edit button. This is not what we want for this edit role policy to succeed. We don't want all these three requirements to be met. We want either the first two requirements to be met or the last requirement to be met. To achieve this, we create a custom policy using func type. If you're new to func delegate in C sharp, please check out part 100 of our C sharp tutorial. To use the func type, on this policy parameter, which is of type authorization policy builder, instead of using these methods require claim and require role, we use require assertion method. As you can see from the IntelliSense, this method takes func type as a parameter, and this func type in turn takes an input parameter of type authorization handler context and returns a Boolean. So let's call the parameter context. On this context object, we have user property and on this we can use isEnroll method to check if the logged in user is in the admin role. In addition to checking if the user is in the admin role, we also want to make sure this user has edit role claim with a value of true. For that, we use context.user.hasClaim. The claim type that we are looking for is edit role. and the claim value must be true. Remember, we want either these two requirements to be met or the user must be in the super admin role. Let's navigate to the list users page. At the moment, we have three users. Let's take a look at this first user, Prajim at prajimtech.com. Notice this user is in the admin role and he also has edit role claim with a value of true. So this user must have access to edit role action. Let's take a look at the second user, superadmin at prajimtech.com. This user is in two roles, admin and superadmin. Let's actually remove him from the admin role. And let's also remove this edit role claim from this user. So this user is only in the super admin role and he should also have access to edit role action. Now let's take a look at the final user. This user is in the admin role and he does not have edit role claim. So this user should not have access to edit role action. Now let's log out and log back in with test at prejimtech.com username. And then navigate to list roles page. Notice we don't see the edit button. This is because this user only satisfied this first requirement. He is only in the admin role. He did not satisfy the second requirement. He does not have edit role claim with a value of true. Now let's log out and log back in with the username prajim at prajimtech.com. 
We see the edit button now because this user satisfies the first two requirements. He is in the admin role, has a claim type of edit role and a value of true. Now let's log out and log back in with the username superadmin at prejimtech.com. We are logged in but we don't see the manage navigation menu. That's because if we take a look at the layout view, notice we are only rendering the manage navigation menu item if the logged in user is in the admin role. So let's comment this check for the time being. We see the manage navigation menu now. Let's navigate to the list roles page. We see the edit button even for this user. Though this user did not satisfy the first two requirements, he satisfied this last requirement. And we have an OR condition between the first two requirements and the last requirement. So when we satisfy this last requirement, the policy succeeded and hence we see the edit button. As you can see from the IntelliSense, require assertion method expects func type as a parameter. And we know a func delegate encapsulates a method. This means we can rewrite this code using this syntax. First, create a method and this method confirms to the signature of the func delegate that is passed as a parameter to require assertion method. Notice it takes an input parameter of type authorization handler context and returns boolean and then we pass this function as a parameter to require assertion method. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.